Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Excuse me. We're taking a look at Ezra 3 today. We see the Israelites are uh, back into in Jerusalem, and and uh, they begin worshiping God and restoring the temple. And, and you know, it just it, it ends with, a, with uh, just a beautiful, beautiful verse where it says that they were weeping and shouting, and there was joy, and, and, and you could hear it from afar away, which is really cool. Really, really cool. Um, but what I noticed about this chapter, which is, is true in the kingdom of God, and, and it's definitely true in, in our lives, is, is that before there was any work for God, there was worship to God. And <clears throat> this, is, what, this is, is how God would prefer it to be. God wants, it, wants there to be an order um, in, in working for him. He wants there to be an order uh, in our lives. And, and first thing in, in that order is to worship God. And you know, worshiping God, you know, it's it's not just music. It's also in our lifestyle choices. It's also in what we say. It's in how we act. It's in how we treat others. It's in so many ways is 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 our worship to God. And and you know, God says that that obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, so you know, obedience is a form of worship. It's a form of worshiping God. And and so. You see here that that the Israelites they worshipped first, and you know one one great thing you get out of worshiping God first and then doing the work of God is that by worshiping God, you're putting yourself as the Bible tells us all to be on one mind, one accord. You are are, are by worshiping God. You're you're allowing God to come into you and infiltrate your thoughts. You're allowing God to come in and 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 shape and mold you. To the work that he has for you, rather than us just trying to do it on our own power. And and you see here, the Israelites, they do that. They get to God first, then they begin work for him. So, you, you, you know, how does that apply to us? It's, well, I mean, it's simple. We need to worship God in, in our choices decision making in our, in our thoughts in our in all that we do we need to worship god and and you know i i probably have the worst singing voice on the earth but yes we need to sing to god too and and i do that and and you know what it doesn't matter what i hear what matters is what he hears and and you know when i sing he hears a beautiful melody of somebody who is just trying to adore him and and the same is for you Worship God with all your heart is what he's looking for from us. When you do that, you're putting yourself in a position to where God can come in and begin to shape you and mold you. You see, the, the Israelites, as we were talking about yesterday, they were in captivity for 70 years. They were captive. Their calling didn't go away, but they were away from it. And... To get back to where they needed to be, it had to start with worship. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter what we are captive by. Worship, when you're worshiping God and you're getting to God, things start breaking off of you. Captivity start breaking off of you. Things, sickness, diseases, um, addictions, it... it it, they can start to break off of you when you begin to worship God. God is that powerful. He really is. Is your faith that powerful? Worship God in all of it. You know, and, and you know, in my life, it's been a rough couple years. About, about almost two years, it's been, been pretty rough. But my worship in God doesn't change. He's still... God of the universe. And even though there's outside influences trying to hold me, my family, everybody captive, you even, worshiping God will help us continue to do the work for God. Worshiping God will continue to bring us that peace and that joy. <laughs> Bring us the, that inner tranquil being. Worshiping God does that. Because worshiping God brings the Spirit of God. I love you all. I hope you have a super, super day.